This presentation is about facial profiles, its examination and its importance in orthodontics. Well, to begin with, facial profile is observed in lateral view. This photograph here shows the lateral view of the patient. Careful observation of the facial profile is an important part of clinical examination. This technique of facial profile assessment is also known as poor man's cephalometric analysis which is helpful to assess whether jaws are proportionately positioned or not. While examining this, the patient should be in upright natural position during examination and is requested to look right ahead and the head is positioned naturally. The visual axis determines the natural head position. Now coming to profile lines, in order to assess facial profile lines, two lines are dropped. One from the bridge of the nose to the base of the upper lip and second from the point downwards to the chin. Now, examining these two lines, we have various types of prof uh, facial profiles. The first one is straight profile. If the two lines are joined together and if they form a straight line, then it is called a straight profile. This is also known as an orthognathic profile. A straight profile shows that both maxilla and mandible are in normal relationship with each other and with the cranial base. Now, what is a convex profile? When the two line segments form an acute angle, it is known as a convex profile. This can be due to various reasons like a deficient or a retrognathic mandible. As we can see in this case, the patient has a retrognathic mandible. It can also be due to a large or a prognathic maxilla. Convex profile is also seen when you have a combination of both a large maxilla and a deficient mandible. Convex profiles are seen mainly in class 2 malocclusions. Concave profile. When two line segments form an obtuse angle, it is known as a concave profile. This can be due to a large or a prognathic mandible as seen in this figure, a deficient or a retrognathic maxilla or a combination of both that is a large mandible and a retrognathic maxilla. A concave profile is usually seen in class 3 malocclusions. Now coming to facial divergence, facial divergence is defined as anterior or posterior inclination of the lower face related to the forehead. We can have either an anterior divergence or posterior divergence. Anterior divergence is a straight profile with an anterior slope and posterior divergence is a straight profile with a posterior slope. Point to be noted here is divergence does not indicate any facial or dental disproportion whereas a profile concavity or convexity does indicate disproportion. Now what are the vertical facial proportions? In the lateral view, when examined, the face can be divided into upper, middle and lower thirds. The lower third facial third often is slightly longer than the upper and middle third. And when we see the lower third of the face, the mouth should be one third of the way between the base of the nose and the chin. These are the normal facial proportions. Nasolabial angle. Nasolabial angle is the angle between the tangents subnasal, that is the anterior most point of columella, and labral superior, superior, that is the superior most point of upper lip. Now this angle can be an acute angle which is usually seen in a prognathic maxilla or proclined teeth or obtuse which is seen in retrognathic jaws or retroclined teeth. The normal range for nasolabial angle is from 90 degrees to 120 degrees. Coming to lip profile, the lip profile evaluation includes the lip posture and while examining this the patient should be relaxed without any strain in the lips. The various types of lip profile is a straight which is seen in 
orthognathic profile with normally inclined dentition. It can be protrusive which is seen in cases of class 2 div division 1 malocclusion or bimaxillary protrusion patients who have proclined anteriors. In these kind of cases, patients are unable to form a lip seal or unable to completely close the lips. These, kind, these lips are called potentially incompetent lips. Retrusive lips are seen with patient, in patients with retrusive jaws, maxillary deficiency and with other craniofacial anomalies like cleft lip and palate or syndromes like Krausen syndromes etc. The mandibular plane angle is also seen in the lid facial profile. This is the angle formed between the Frankfurt horizontal plane and a tangent drawn from the lower border of the mandible. How do we see the Frankfurt horizontal plane? It is seen by connecting or drawing a straight line through the bony or margins of the orbit to the upper margins of the external auditory meatus. And the mandibular plane uh, is visualized by placing a finger or a mirror handle along the lower border of the mandible. The mandibular plane angle can be steep or flat. It is steep in cases of open bite or long anterior facial heights and flat in cases of deep bite or lower anterior facial heights. This was about examination and importance of facial profiles in orthodontics. Thank you for watching this video.